Hey friends, um, it's Mark here, Holzer here, and um, with Art for the Journey. And we're going to talk again today about the human face. And a lot of people try to draw the face. Uh, you will recall in a little exercise I did last week, I drew this, this face, and I drew it from you know, this little uh, instructional sheet here. Uh, this was the face here. And we were looking at the proportions of the face. And basically what I tried to do with this little demonstration was show you that, you know, essentially drawing the face is not that hard if you follow the, the shadow patterns. Um, having said that, you know, that's nice as a quick sketch or something along those lines. To really draw a good face, one that looks right, you have to measure it. There's just no way around it. And unless you're really, really, really good and you've been at this for a long time and um, uh, you can just reach out there and make it happen. I can't do that. Uh, I'm one of these artists who is a uh, kind of a jack of all trades and master of none. Um, uh, when I taught uh, a... Uh, a portrait class, I, uh, I, I said it was an introduction because uh, uh, I'm not a master and when I get in front of a master I sit on the floor and I watch. And, uh, but what I want to offer you as regular everyday guys and gals like me uh, is just some thoughts that might help you um, in some work that you're doing. I'm going to take uh, a lot of what um, I do today from uh, Andrew Loomis, and he is one amazing guy, if you are into figure drawing or portraits, is the best that's out there. I've got a whole shelf of books on portrait drawing, and from all kinds of different perspectives, and some classical stuff and everything else. And I can tell you that uh, Andrew Loomis nails all of it in a way that's understandable. Let me start out again with uh, our face. Remember that the classical dimensions of the face, um, you got the top of the face, the bottom, or the top of the head, the bottom of the chin, and then this line in the middle, which is the eyes, which is halfway between the top and bottom. Then you've got another set of, uh, of lines that really go from what is called the hairline here, uh, and you count thirds, a hairline to the uh, brow line here as a third, the brow line to the bottom of the nose as a third, and then the bottom of the nose to the bottom of the chin as a third. And then we, we looked at dividing the face up into five columns like this of pretty equal width um, from the ear to the outside of the eye to the inside of the eye. Then you've got the, nose, the width of the nose at the, at the base down here, and then the inside of the eye to the outside of the eye, outside of the eye to the, to the ear, roughly speaking. Andrew Loomis actually uses that third, a third, and a third. And this is the book that I'm taking a lot of this from, Drawing the Head in Hands. It's an outstanding book. I think it's still for sale out there, but he has a beautiful way of going about creating a head that is pretty, pretty understandable. Um, he starts with the idea of a ball. And you basically kind of cut the sides off of the ball and then you, you begin to construct the face uh, out of that. Um, what I've done here is sort of taken this example here with this face. Now, I think it's important for me to tell you whose face this is. This is uh, my granddaughter, uh, Ellie, and she was uh, the model for several of the classes that I taught. And she's got a beautiful face. Um, this is another way of dividing the face up, and we'll talk about that at another time. Um, Ellie is also a nursing student, and she's just wonderful. So let's, let's take a look at this. Let's take a look at this uh, 
And as we look at it, as you can see, I have my two friends here. Um, I don't know what to call them. I've called him uh, Claude, and this is Jennifer, maybe. I don't know. But um, when I do a, uh, a portrait class, we always start with the skull and to understand the skull because the head basically is one big bone. Now, yeah, you've got the jaw that kind of goes up and down and you get a different length here, but essentially the head is one big bone and no matter which way you turn the head like this, everything is gonna turn with it and it's all gonna stay in the same proportion. And, um, uh, and also you've got some perspective things to, to handle with the head. But basically, if you can figure out the basic marks of the head, you can do a good head. You can measure it. So we start out with what, uh, and the other guy over here, this is uh, Claude, and basically we use him to show the shadow planes of the face, um, the light planes and shadow planes of the face. And you can see how, how it shifts around as we move him. Uh, all those flat areas are those are those planes of the face. And then when we look at her, you can see, you know, the, the bony structure around the eyes here, the cheeks and the nose, um, and the width of the head. Um, interestingly, the widest part of the head is here, even though for some of us like me, when we put our cheeks out there, that gets kind of wider than up here. But... Bottom line is, you know, the skull determines, you know, where everything goes. So let's take a look at uh, Andrew Loomis's approach here. And basically what he says is that you, you, you start with a, a circle, okay? That's my attempt at a circle there. And then you cut the circle in half that way, and you cut it in half this way. Where these two lines meet, that is the spot on the skull that you sort of measure everything else from. That's the place where you start. And he divides the, the, uh, the face into those three, um, those, those three um, spaces between the brow line, right, and the, um, the uh, hairline right here. And then taking that as a third, you go down here and you've got the, um, the brow line to the bottom of the nose. And if I shut my mouth, you get the bottom of the nose to the bottom of the face. So using those markers, he then puts um, his head together. So we start out with a circle, we get this, and these are, these are the brow lines right here. Um, this is the hairline up here. And how do you determine the hairline? Well, it's roughly here. You know, it's not the top of the head, it's down maybe a, a third to a quarter, depending on the person. So you make that mark and then you simply use it to determine where your nose is going to be, which is right here. And then you use that same uh, um, distance to determine where your chin is going to be, which is right here. Now, between the nose and the chin is this line here. It's about halfway. And actually, I have one of these really handy little um, measuring things here that uh, one of my students turned me on to. And it's an interesting way to measure, you know, to, to measure this. If you look at um, this phase from chin to the top of the head, and this is half of this. And so you can see that uh, halfway between the chin and the top of the head is this line here, and this is where the eyes go. So, you know, taking this circle, we determine the brow line, the center line, and then um, we, we figure out a line for the hairline up there. We take that, we got a third, a third, and a third to the bottom of the chin. And then once we have that figured out, we can take half of this distance and that's where your, uh, your eyes will, will go, you know, the tear ducts, basically. And what, what Loomis does is he, he then goes and he, about, 
you know, somewhere around wherever you've got the brow line at. You come over here on the ball and, you, and basically you draw a line down here because the, the head is not really round. It's round at the top and it kind of goes down on the sides, right? And then comes around on the bottom. So what he'll do is he'll make these cuts like this and it comes down like that. And then uh, we'll eliminate those. Okay. Eliminate that, that, that area there. And we still maintain this as the center of this, right? Because that's important. And then we look at dividing the, 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 sh the face up into major areas, you know, the front area and then the two, the two sides. And you get a similar kind of thing with this guy here. You've got a hairline here, and if you measured this, it would all come out the same way. Um, but you've got kind of a, of a line here. You can see how it comes down like this, and it comes down like that. And, and, and what he does is he creates that line. Just, these are just markers as you're building your head, okay? Um, and so we've got these same, same markers here. And what I'm gonna start doing is using those as my markers. I can begin to draw this face. I can come in here and eliminate, you know, what's left of that, of that circle, you know, begin to play around with that. And then, you know, looking at this brow, you know, we, we know that it comes out like this, and we know we're gonna have something that goes down like this, and typically, you know, you get a straight line with the end of the nose like that, and then we get that on either side like that. And then it kind of comes down. Right, again, we're following uh, the skull there. And then we've got, you know, we've got our eyes in here someplace. So, you know, I might, uh, you know, go in and, you know, put my eyes in again like that. And just stick them in there. Hello, he's beginning to look interesting. And then down at the bottom of the nose, you know, the nose has these two wings. Uh, so we'll stick those in, you know, it's easy, to, it's easy to put these things in once you've got your markers in place, right? Um, and then th this line here, the, which is halfway between the nose and the bottom of the uh, chin, is really this area right here. It's the bottom of the lip. And if you look at Ellie, you know, she's got a very well-defined uh, bottom of the lip there. And so, uh, you know, we basically put in... Um, you know, a, uh, some lips there, and then you've got your, your, uh, your chin down here. You can, a lot of times people might do a little circle there just to kind of give us that, that approach. Another thing, you know, that's interesting about the face is the ears. And the ears are going to, come, going to come out right about, again, this is the center of this. They're going to come, come out, and I'll tell you, I'm going to just do a little kind of some freehanding here. Remember we talked about this being the uh, widest part. It comes in a little bit, and we can begin to smooth some of this out. Um, that's our face, like that, you know. And then we do the same thing over here. You know, again, we're just using these as our markers. And, you know, we know this comes in a little bit right in here. So I'm going to come in like that. And then it kind of comes out like this. And then we're, the, the face is going to come in something like that. So we've got these cheeks. All right. So we're beginning to see our face come together right here. Um, then I can take these lines and get rid of them. You know, they've sort of served their usefulness. And we've got our ears. Now the ears are gonna come in right about, at, they're gonna start, you know, the classical ears, you know, mine are a little longer because I'm old and they get, they've gotten hanging down to here someplace. But basically they're gonna come out like this, come down, like that. So the bottom of the nose and the top of the brow. And the same thing over here. Bringing it down. 
like that. So there's our ears. And, and what we've got here is a face that's really proportional. And of course, everybody's face is different in the end because we're talking about classic um, measurements here. Uh, so they begin to work this classic face, this standard um, off the assembly line face, and you begin to work it differently to whoever your, your subject is. Um, so anyway, we take the face and then we've, you know, we kind of do a little thing like that, get that nose in there. And then you're going to have, um, okay, we start playing with the, 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 uh, the planes of the face at this point. And we know that we've got some, you know, some hair going around over up in here. So you can begin to see some of that going on. Some of this going on over here, wherever it is. I guess we got a guy here. You know, and you can and do a little something here. Get those ears in there. And um, the eyes, uh, let me get rid of some of these other lines here. And we can begin to get rid of that line, right? Don't need it anymore. Um, and at this point, we begin. We can begin to put some of the shading in to, to uh, create some of those features. And we know from this guy here that we've got these three planes in the face. So, depending on what the I'm going to have the light come from this direction here. So this side of the face is going to be lit, and this side is going to have some shadow in it, just like this one does. So you know, we're going to have you know this plane is going to have some shadow to it come around like this. And again, you see all this going on over here um, and how, how dark that is. And you can begin to fill those forms in. And then coming around the bottom, something like that. You also have the shadow of this brow coming in like this. So this tends to be a little bit darker. Um, and this side of the nose might be lit, and this side here is going to have some shadow in it. And maybe there's a shadow, cast shadow, that goes off over here. And so we get some of these shadows here and here. Um, typically, you know, this kind of protrudes out a little bit. It might catch some light, which is why we kind of did that there. Uh, in, in terms of making the eyes, it's the top of the eye that's the darkest along with the pupil itself. And then you get a little bit of, uh, of I kind of curl that in uh, on the end over here. Um, the bottom of the eye tends to be lit and the top of the eye has a shadow. So that's kind of what I'm doing here and bring that around like that. So we've got our two eyes. And here we're gonna probably have a little bit of shadow and there, typically, you've got some shadow going on over here as well. Um, the center here will have some shadow, right? Although, because of this bony structure up here, this tends to have a little bit, uh, be a little bit lighter. You've got this bony structure here, and this, you know, will typically catch some light, you know, over there. So... We're coming around, we've got the nose, we've got these things going on here. We've got this kind of happening. Uh, this is called a philtrum. Somebody told me that name one time, I, I don't know, this little thing right here above your nose, or below your nose, a little, it's a philtrum. Go figure. All right, so we got that coming around like this. And then, of course, this here is gonna be in shadow, so we'll put him in shadow. This one here has got some light on it. Um, you do have some shadow back down in here, um, and you might also have a little bit you know, over in here, but this side, this side of, the, of, of the face is going to be lit. And as I did with uh, Ellie's face, you can see, uh, of course, this is the light side and this is the shadow side, but you can really draw these shapes and give them values. 
um, when you've got a model in that kind of light. The other thing we want to talk about is, um, you know, the pit of the neck, you know. And uh, the pit of the neck here is about a little more than two-thirds, I think, down from, if you look at the top of the face to the chin, the pit of the neck is about kind of two-thirds down or, or two-thirds of the um, actual uh, height of the head. So I brought it down to about here. And then you've got these muscles that come and are so defining in the neck that come down either side. I don't know if you can see my muscle or not, but you know, it's down in here someplace. You know, we kind of try to do it over here. And then you've got your clavicles, your collarbone here, which goes to the top of the shoulder. And so you've got these very distinct shapes here on a face um, that you want to be aware of. But if I were to take this and, you know, I continue to work with it and try and refine it, I would try to refine it into, uh, into Ellie's, Ellie's face. And you can see, you know, the positioning of the eyes, um, you know, her kind of a, a broader mouth, um, you know. So I begin to work with my model here, my, my standard uh, uh, off-the-shelf face, and begin to modify it and work it and, um, until it becomes Ellie. You know, with her hair, right? Um, and then her features, a little bit smaller ear, you know, and all of that. So I just thought I would share that with you. Uh, I am social distancing and trying to uh, do something um, interesting and fun. So I thought I would try this out. And I hope that uh, you and your social distancing, if you want to play around with faces, uh, maybe you can play around with this. Thanks and uh, uh, stay healthy.